Fedora 42 has arrived, and it's one of the most feature-packed releases in years. So whether you're a developer, or a Linux enthusiast, or just someone who's curious about where desktop Linux is headed, then this release is definitely one to look into. You could even say it might be the ultimate version of the ultimate distro. 42, Hitchhiker's Guide. Anyway, Fedora is a super interesting distribution because one of their pillars or main purposes is to be first. But it's not a rolling release distro, so you might be thinking, well, how do they do that if they don't have the latest and greatest updates of everything? Well, what Fedora means by first is being the first to do something, first to implement something, or innovate on the desktop platform, or just innovate on Linux in general. So that's where the where the desktop Linux is headed part comes from. They have a lot of stuff that they are innovating in this release with Fedora 42. For example, they have a new installer. They have an out-of-the-box x86 emulation on ARM. They are adding a whole new desktop spin with the Cosmic Desktop and a lot more. So let's dive in. One of the biggest headline features is the promotion of the KDE spin to the status of an official edition. That means that KDE Plasma Desktop now sits right alongside Fedora Workstation and the GNOME Desktop as a flagship experience. This is awesome news because it puts the KDE Edition as a top-level option for Fedora users, meaning it will receive just as much attention as the GNOME variant does. And it's one of the best KDE distros out there, so I'm happy to see it get the recognition that it should. I've been testing the new KDE Edition with Fedora 42, and so far, I like it a lot. I plan to do a full review of Fedora 42 KDE uh, later on, so consider subscribing for that. I also will be using Fedora 42 KDE Edition to make the next episode of my show This Week in Linux, so check that one out too. But for a quick first look assessment, I'm really liking Fedora KDE. Well, the Fedora Edition, the KDE Edition of Fedora 42, to be specific. They've had Fedora KDE for a long time, but the Edition version. So far, everything I've seen and I've tried been really solid, even gaming. In a previous release, I had some issues with OBS and gaming, I play various games, but the main game I play is Rocket League, which runs through Proton. And in previous versions of Fedora, there were some artifacts that were happening. Now, for a long time, they were fine, but like one of the recent releases had some artifacting on the game. And while I don't know if it was a Fedora issue or a Wayland issue or what, it doesn't happen anymore. So that's awesome. There, all that stuff is gone in Fedora 42. It works just fine. So I'm happy about that. KDE Plasma 6.3 is the version included with the promotion to edition, and it brings improved tablet input, better fractional scaling, sharper display rendering, more detailed system monitoring, and a whole lot more. If you want to learn more about the release of KDE Plasma 6.3 itself, then check out the This Week in Linux episode 298, where I cover the release in a lot of depth. Remember when I mentioned that Fedora likes to innovate? Well, there's a new spin joining the lineup, and that is for the Cosmic Desktop. Cosmic is still in alpha right now, but that's not going to stop Fedora from making a spin. For those that don't know, uh, Cosmic is a Rust-based desktop environment developed by System76, the same team behind the Pop! OS distro. And Fedora's implementation includes all the core features like you'd expect, tiling per workspace, uh, tab windows, and all the customization options. Uh, and so if you're itching to try Cosmic, then you can use Pop! OS, of course, or just spin up this version of Fedora. Now let's talk about the Fedora Workstation. The Workstation Edition now uses a completely redesigned installer, the Anaconda Web UI. It's a native Wayland application and offers a guided partitioning system, streamlined dual boot setup, and even a new reinstall Fedora option. It replaces the older installer with a more modern linear setup that's easier to navigate, especially for newcomers. Anaconda is a powerful installer and I recently came to appreciate it more when I did some work using RHEL, but for a long time Anaconda felt a bit cumbersome, so I'm happy to see the improvement, especially because of the UX where you had to go into certain sections and then go back and then go into another section and then go back and that sort of stuff. I think the more linear approach is just fantastic. Plus the new installer improves keyboard layout consistency, supports RDP for remote installs, and unifies installation defaults across architectures. It is currently only available for GNOME Workstation for this release, but future releases are expected to implement as well on other variants. As far as GNOME itself, Fedora Workstation 42 comes with GNOME 48. It includes new well-being tools like screen time tracking and movement reminders, more responsive rendering with triple buffering, notification stacking, and improvements for the Wayland session including support for the Orca screen reader, which is huge for accessibility. You can check out the full in-depth release video that I made for GNOME 48 if you would like to know more about this particular release of GNOME. 
Fedora 42 also makes a big play on hardware compatibility front, particularly for ARM users. With this release, Fedora now supports x86 and x86-64 app emulation on ARM-based systems out of the box. It leverages the FEX or FEX emulator stack, originally built for the Fedora Asahi Remix, and dynamically picks the best tool to run non-native applications. This means that if you're running Fedora on an ARM laptop or an Apple Silicon Mac using the Fedora Asahi Remix, you can now run x86 apps much more easily than ever before, including some games. Speaking of which, Fedora 42 release also includes an update for the Fedora Asahi Remix. That includes both KDE and the GNOME versions, as well as a Fedora server variant and a minimal image for building your own environment from scratch. Hardware support has been improved in this release with new microphone support for MacBooks and better integration across the board. Emulation and performance improvements make this a compelling option for Mac users who want to explore Linux without swapping out their computers. Apple has not been the best example for hardware for most of their existence. Historically, it has always been the OS that's been their claim to fame, but recent years, that's kind of flipped. Now, Apple hardware is up there right for the high-end consumer tech, and their OS has kind of been lacking, so to speak. But Fedora Asahi Remix is a great solution to benefit from that hardware, but using a better OS, in my opinion. Though it's important to note that it doesn't support all of the M-series chips just yet, but has solid support for the uh, M1 and the M2 series. Now let's talk about the Atomic Desktops, which are Fedora's immutable-ish variants like Silverblue, Kinoite, Budgie Atomic, and Sway Atomic versions. There are a lot of improvements, including ComposeFS, that's now enabled by default, improving the cont uh, content integrity, uh, a static grub config is now used to clean up legacy boot entries, and Lux users will benefit from improved keyboard layout handling at boot. Real quick though, I said immutable-ish because these aren't immutable distros and really there's a lot of misinformation about them, uh, about immutable anyway. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, we broke it down on my podcast, Destination Linux, and in it I explain what it is, what it isn't, and how it differs from atomic distros and all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in more about immutable distros, what they are and what they aren't, check out episode 415 of Destination Linux. There's also an experimental cosmic atomic variant that's being worked on. It's not listed on the website just yet, but it is cool to see that they're working on it. Fedora 42 also includes an updated toolchain for developers with GCC 15, LLVM 20, a PHP 8.4, Ruby 3.4, and Go 1.24. And DNF 5 saw some nice improvements like how it handles expired repository keys automatically, streamlining upgrades and installs. Fedora is also extending its reach with official Windows Subsystem for Linux support, or WSL. Starting with Fedora 42, you can now download dedicated Fedora WSL images if for some unknowable reason you want to continue using Windows Fedora 42 is more than just a release. If you ask me, it's the ultimate release for this innovative Linux distro, especially the KDE edition. Getting Fedora installed is just the first step of the journey, and I'm working on a video that will show you the next steps after you've installed Fedora 42, and when it's ready, you'll be able to check it out right here. Uh, but if you're watching this before that's out, then for those interested in what's new in GNOME 48, which comes in Fedora Workstation, then you can check out the in-depth release video I did, which you can click right here. Or if you're watching it once the other one's out, you can just pick which one. Pick one. Pick one.